the idea of a timeline split between a third dimensional and fifth dimensional version of Earth is not new and it did not come from this age. It has been tracked in mysticism and known as streams of consciousness. One stream of consciousness, which is ascending and is following the evolutionary pathway for the human consciousness and one pathway or one stream of consciousness that is fragmenting itself into chaos, otherwise known as entropy. So these two streams of consciousness, one that is ascending and one that is descending, are known as the regenerative stream and the degenerative stream of consciousness. And in the degenerative stream of consciousness, the one that is left behind and known as the third dimensional earth, that timeline is going to be coexisting side by side with the higher timeline, the one that is ascending and the one that is following the regenerative stream of consciousness. So these two timelines are splitting no different than how a cell divides itself through the process of mitosis. And yet they will remain parallel to one another and even look like they are interacting with one another for quite some time until they fully polarize into their own curriculum. So this is really about curriculum. And when we're talking about a regenerative stream of consciousness, one that is following the evolutionary impulse within the spirit of this age and is following the evolutionary pathway of ascension for our human consciousness, coexisting side by side with the de-evolutionary pathway. What we're really looking at is our level of embodiment between these two forces, love and fear. Love in this case is representing consciousness. The energy that is driving the split in timelines is the same energy that creates the mitosis of cell division. There are always spiritual forces behind the momentum to split timelines. And what those forces can be reduced to is love and fear, order and chaos, consciousness and unconsciousness, syntropy and entropy, free will and predeterminism. I could go on, but you get my point. At the end of an age, there is always a splitting of worlds into two separate time-space realities that still coexist with each other until they fully solidify into their new dimension. One timeline represents the people who are purifying their vibration through becoming conscious. And the other timeline represents the cognitive dissonance that creates the victim perpetrator cycle. The lower timeline will eventually fully lock itself into a victim perpetrator identity where they solidify into a victim mentality. The shadow side of this, of course, is that we do not want others to exist. So we play both parts of this vicious cycle out in real time. We play the victim out and we play the perpetrator out at the very same time, repeating this karma into a downward spiral trajectory. When a being elevates their consciousness, they are raising their frequency. And when they are raising their frequency, they start to occupy a different level of time-space reality. So they begin to start creating a timeline that can now suit their consciousness and their frequency at a better level of their curriculum because we are always learning lessons. Therefore, our reality and our realm will always reflect the best domain and the most suitable external conditions to match our level of awareness and to match our level of curriculum that we have vibrationally lined up with. The idea of a lower third dimensional earth and a higher fifth dimensional earth can quickly become fundamentalist. So let's bring this to basics so that we understand the actual physics and the actual spiritual dynamics at play behind these two Earths. One has more syntropy involved in it. So when we're talking about higher levels of consciousness and those being actual dimensions that now carry out a new curriculum 
for us to learn and for us to live. We're looking at it through the lens of syntropy and the esoteric meaning of syntropy is to reorganize. So syntropy is a force that creates order. It creates order because it is reorganizing itself to always be in alignment with higher levels of consciousness and higher levels, therefore, of love. So syntropy is not against chaos. Syntropy is not against division or entropy. Syntropy is the force that can receive more awareness. It can receive more consciousness so that then it can take that in and reorganize itself and when we reorganize our consciousness, we are evolving. So it's one that is going with the regenerative stream of consciousness, and it is one that is ascending or elevating its frequency because it can continuously become more conscious and therefore embody more love. How we will be able to tell that we are in this evolutionary stream of consciousness that is ascending is by our ability to create internal coherence. Coherence is that force that we are calling syntropy and that we are calling love because coherence means that we are healing our body, mind, and our spirit, our emotional body, our mental body. We are uniting all of them in this reorganization that is taking place called syntropy. So when we are reorganizing our body, our emotions, our mind, our spirit, that is all what's called healing. That's also called integration. But those are just what's called the force of coherency. So coherency is one that has a united consciousness. Whereas the lower timeline is the force of unconsciousness, which is expressed as discoherency. So if the energetic momentum that is driving us into an ascending timeline is one that is ultimately of love, and that love is expressed as us becoming more conscious, and that consciousness is one where we are reorganizing our body, our mind, our emotions, and our spirit so that we can embody more of that regeneration of this higher loving timeline. Then the descending timeline would be one that is pulling the energetic momentum into division, into further chaos and it's driven by fear. So the descending timeline has a main feature to it, and that is one that is driven by the force of entropy. Entropy is the spiritual force that disperses and expands out energy. So entropy isn't bad, but when entropy is the dominant driving force behind a timeline, then we start seeing there being more chaos, more division, more dispersal without reorganizing it and without there being order created. So this lower timeline is one that is fueled by entropy. And what that looks like is more division, less consciousness, more fear. And when there is more fear within a timeline, that creates more external control. So the more internal fear that we carry, the more external control that will be manifested as. This fear that is the driving force behind the lower timeline won't always look like classical fear. It will show up mainly through the lens of fundamentalism in all the many ways that fundamentalism can form an appearance. It will look like the opposite of having discernment and the opposite of having nuance and therefore the opposite of having compassion. Instead, fundamentalism will create more and more division between everyone until everyone is in a hyperactive state of separation and fear 
because once again, the driving force of the lower timeline is an impulse to disperse and to fragment consciousness. So it is one that is keeping its self separate from its environment, from other people, and from everything that will harm its own individual ego and its own belief systems. Why this is important is because time in the third dimension repeats itself. It recycles. It goes into denser expressions and it goes into lighter expressions like the peaks and the lows of a wave. If a being has raised their consciousness higher than the field of third dimensional time, they begin to start entraining their frequency into a completely different version of space and time with experiences and lessons that best accommodate their frequency. Eventually, their frequency will begin to raise higher than the options and experiences that are currently available within a collective space-time that is still asleep, until eventually there will be no more resonance at all, and we won't be able to physically perceive the other timeline. So a major timeline split would be between all of the collective consciousness that is ready for a new curriculum and has already mastered the third dimensional curriculum and all of the collective consciousness that would best be served by continuing to grow in the third dimension. When this split happens, it's called phase lock. And a phase lock is the real name to what we are calling the timeline split between the third dimensional consciousness and the 5D consciousness. Now, the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy always increases with time, but entropy does not always mean chaos. Entropy is needed. It is more like a marker. It is a measure of the number of different ways that a set of objects can be arranged. So entropy is what fuels cell division and timeline division because entropy is what disperses or is the factor that expands. All of this comes down to what the next step for growth is for a collective. Entropy will manifest as either chaos or as expansion, depending on the being that it is interacting with. Another way of saying all of this is that the lower timeline is fueled by the karma of the unlearned lessons and the unlearned curriculum within this age that will naturally create judgment and fear and division. Whereas the higher timeline is going to naturally be one that carries the open-endedness of Dharma, the force that's going to allow us to continuously stay open to whatever challenges and whatever lessons we need to learn because we are always going to be incorporating them into our awareness and incorporating them into our life. When we do that, we continuously evolve. And that's what the esoteric meaning behind the regenerative stream of consciousness, which is ascending, and the degenerative stream of consciousness, which is descending, is really about. In the evolutionary stream of consciousness, we can naturally regenerate ourselves, which is why it ends up leading to a golden age, one that is of complete regeneration. Whereas the descending timeline, our consciousness prematurely calcifies. It calcifies our consciousness because we have stopped growing. And when we stop evolving, we calcify. So it's a degenerative stream because it cannot become more conscious. It cannot continue its growth. It calcifies. So the ascending timeline is one that is going to reflect back to us the lessons and the curriculum that will most be suitable for our level of awareness. And they're going to be one that embodies naturally more sovereignty. Because the more that a being raises their frequency and becomes more conscious, they are raising their vibration into love. And love reflects to us through the act of freedom. So freedom, consciousness, and love are all different forms of the same expression. 
Whereas when it comes to the degenerative timeline or the descending timeline, that one represents the embodiment of fear. And with fear, what you have is the lower frequency curriculum. So the key features in the lower timeline are ones that are ruled by the main expression of fear, which is control and division. Control, division, and fear are all representative of unconsciousness. So what this really boils down to is two timelines and the timeline split is between consciousness and love and fear and unconsciousness. With these two timelines, we have the option to always transition and always choose to embody more consciousness and to embody more awareness and therefore unity and therefore love. And that is what this time period is teaching us. We are in the middle of this timeline split where these two realms of the third dimensional earth and the fifth dimensional earth are still interacting with one another and they will continue to interact and to engage with one another and to even look like they are coexisting inside the same realm. When in reality, we are at a massive choice point. We are in two worlds at once and we cannot tell the difference because we are not at that full timeline split yet. We are in different realms of earth. And within these different realms, now we have our own personal curriculum. And within our own personal curriculum, it is looking as though that we are on one solid earth with all other people who are on the same exact timeline. When in reality, we are pulling all of our vibrational momentum in one direction, which is love and consciousness which is represented by the fifth dimensional timeline. As we are at the very same time, experiencing the world around us, pulling its consciousness deeper into division, deeper into separation and unconsciousness. When these two worlds fully pull into their own vibrational realms, that is when we will see the completion of this timeline split. And it won't even be in front of our very eyes because the universe has brilliant editing software. All we will see with our physical eyes is the continuous strip of film, the movie of Earth, go into different plots and go into different storylines where all of a sudden we drift further apart from our environment further apart from the people who are no longer a frequency match to us, further apart from a collective that is no longer a frequency match to us. There will be different storylines as to why this occurred, but we won't actually see the split. Instead, we will see the journey of the choices we made. And the really cool thing is, the more you use your free will to make radical changes and empowered choices, your free will becomes a conduit to the higher order of this universe, the fifth dimensional timeline. And the higher order of this universe is expressed as synchronicity, which aligns things to make it look like it was fate all along. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of After School. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more of it, you can check out my channel, The Alchemist. There, I cover topics such as spirituality, consciousness, and esoteric knowledge. Infinite love and gratitude.